Yes. Headbangers and Hooligans rolling on a Friday. And that can mean only one thing. The top 50 albums of all time from yours truly scum malicious. As always, thank you for listening. I didn't give no hints. Usually, uh, over the last 48 albums, uh, the day before, you know, I post a song or a picture. I decided not to do that this time. The last two, because they truly are special albums. I just thought it would be, you know, add a little bit of excitement to it. And, uh, let's kill the suspense. My number two album of all time. This might be a surprise to a couple close friends that that know all the bands that I love. It's Gore. America must be destroyed. Yeah, that's a big deal. Uh, That means the number one album of all time, in my opinion, is not Gore. Uh, This... It was really, really hard for me. Okay? Without giving too much away, I switched back and forth. Especially the last couple weeks. Uh, The album that's number one, I had at number two. And then, I'd switch it. And then a couple days later, I'd switch it back. Really, it came down to one thing. And... This is going to sound kind of crazy. The album that's going to end up being number one next week. uh, The reason it's just a notch above this amazing fucking album. America Must Be Destroyed is just beautiful. Yes, I'm using the words beautiful in describing a gore album. uh, Is because that album, it, it, it changed my life. And... Not, not that this didn't change my life, uh, but but Gore had already kind of been in my life. The number one album, it brought attention to a new band that I had kind of just discovered. But none of that. We're talking about America Must Be Destroyed, 1992, Metal Blade Records. There is a unique fact about this album that makes it even more special to me. As you all know, Mike Dirks, a.k.a. Ballsack, The Jaws of Death, uh, needs a transplant to live, or he's going to die in the next five years. Fucking cancer. And I'm I'm still pissed off about that. Uh, He played... All the guitars on this album. Dewey Roll was the guy that had uh, had been playing the part of Flatus Maximus. He quit for this album. So, Balsack. All the guitars uh, on this bad boy. And he fucking shines on this album. The production of this album is the best. Even better than Beyond Hell. And you know how much I love Beyond Hell. This is the best sounding core album. It fucking booms out of the speaker. Uh, Odorous, that voice. Front and center as always. But he doesn't overshadow everything. It's just a perfect mix of the instruments and the vocals, the drums... It's a masterpiece, and that's why it's number two. So this bad boy kicks off with the song, Ham on the Bone. It just kind of kicks in. It's almost, dare I say this, kind of a punk feel to it, hardcore punk. It's just, bam, we're right into it. Uh, can you hear the whisper and wind over the screams of your dying friends? Did you know your life was mine? You know what I got? How am I on the bone? That little thing that I can't leave alone. 
Now I feel the purpose of my life to find ham on the bone is mine. I, 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 na, 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 na. Yeah, it's just ball sack slaying on some power chords. And it does have that hardcore punk feel. And I, it works. If you're going to kick off an album with it's titled America Must Be Destroyed, that's how you do it. Uh, but I love the last verse. Uh, Odor sings, Now my hand grasps my throbbing root and chant unclap, unclasp, go to the head of the clasp, madly stroke my flaccid shaft. <laughs> I just, I love that part. Then we get to cracking the egg. Uh, the nice thing about uh, America Must Be Destroyed, they have a video to go with this album, and it's called Faust in Wonderland. I've talked about it before. It's like a little mini movie um, that goes along with the album. It's just so awesome. There's so many fucking great things in that video. Uh, but I think of the video every time I listen to the song now. Uh, D guitars, ball sack, that I had mentioned before reviewing. His guitar riff on this, it, it's just perfect. It's got that heavy crunch that I like, and it's thick, and it just beats you in the face. Uh, I know that uh, the Buckster, my brother, who's driving down the road right now, he he loves this guitar riff too. And Odor oh, just sounds perfect on this song. The egg was spawned in our mutation pits in the bowels of your earth. It was grown, feeding on the blood of your loin spawn and all the filthy load that was blown. Yeah, you know, cracking the egg, the time is right. Cracking the egg, cracking my pipe. And then, of course, in the second part, he, he kind of slows down when he says it. Cracking the egg, dun, dun. the time is right. Cracking the egg, crack. In my pipe. You know, we get a nice little guitar solo from Ballsack. Uh, and then when it, it kicks back in, we get to that main riff. It just, there's so many great guitar riffs over the entire album. Uh, this is Ballsack's shining moment, and he's been great on all their albums, obviously. And I'm not trying to sound like a complete fanboy. But, wow, it's hard to top this. He, he'd probably even admit that. Um, and Michael Bishop, yes, the guy that is now Blothar, he's really good on this album, too, on bass, uh, as always, you know. And, of course, I never talk about Brad Roberts enough on drums, Jizz Mac. Uh, it's just a great-sounding record. Uh and they all contribute to that because they're good musicians. Then we get to another classic. This whole album is full of classics. Have You Seen Me? Or, excuse me, Gore Gore. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I need to relax a little bit. Don't I, Penelope? Yep. Yeah, I get a great album like this, and I, I get too excited. I'm trying to skip songs here. Listen, Gore Gore. Oh, my goodness. Uh, obviously we're talking about T-Rex and in the video the odors goes toe to toe they both land some pretty good shots but you know all, odors always wins basically T-Rex is a pussy when it comes to fighting odors that's just how it goes uh, Gorgor comes sirens wail mournful drone a babbling flail Thunderous gnashing firestorm, flames illuminate his form. Gorgo comes and you must die. Swats F-16s from the sky, admit you crave the gift he brings you. Fall and worship, tyrant king, you gargar, gargar. You know, they do that for another verse. And then, towards the middle, right, completely change the song. That new guitar riff kicks in oh one of my favorites of course odor sounds way better than i do but yeah that 
that change in the guitar riff just, yeah, kind of gives me chicken skin every time I hear it. And then, of course, odors. Skulls are smashed and bones are bending, joints are popping, claws are rending. Groveling, sniveling, driveling horde to worship, scaly overlord. And then the next verse Apocalypse becomes creation, Gorgor shall erase the nation before you leap into his gizzard, fall and worship, tyrant lizard. Gorgor comes and you must die. He swats the stealth down from the sky. Admit you crave the death he brings you. Fall and worship. Tyrant king, you gaw gaw. Yeah. And then they kick back into the uh, uh, the intro riff in the first couple of verses. It's just fucking amazing. I'll probably say that a lot because that's just what this album is. Number two album of all time. I have to use words like amazing and the greatest of all time and the best I've ever heard same shit I always say now have you seen me how can you not love this song it's it's so fucked up in so many ways first off of course it's got the little like jazz lounge sound and you know in the video uh, it's got beefcake playing the upright bass so you feel like you're in some dive bar. Uh, and the lyrics are just amazing as always. Uh, Mommies, I've been stealing your babies. I gag the brat and then maybe I'll suck out his brain. Odorous just delivers perfectly every line on the song. Dead kids, they make me feel almost hard. I'll go get one from the schoolyard. He bled like a stock pig. Da -na -na. And then of course the distortion for that for that part of the song. So dynamic. And uh, I never use that word enough describing this band, but Gore is a very dynamic band. Uh, then we get the second verse. Suckle, my bloated love knuckle, just like Fatty Arbuckle. I'm gay and I'm proud. That's right, faggot, and a corpse full of maggots. I want to blow, come not bag it. God damn it, I'm horny. Dun, dun, dun. Have you seen me? And then we know the rest of the song, it's ball sack. Just blasting that fucking distortion. It's beautiful. Yeah, I just used beautiful twice. Talking about war. Probably don't hear that very much. And so the story continues. And the next song is The Morality Squad. And of course this is Granbo. And in the video, you know, she's the head of The Morality Squad. They want to destroy Gore. You know, because Gore's evil. And disgusting and ruining the planet. And she sings a song... We're the morality squad armed with the wrath of God. My name is Granbo, and here's my holy hot rod. Freedom for all the people, brave, true, and strong. Freedom for all the people, unless I think they're wrong. It's that. The Silly Gore song that they inject in a lot of their albums. Uh, but it, it works because it's a story. And like I said, you got to watch the video of Phallus in Wonderland. It's... It's really the greatest music video ever made. And I know it's not just a music video, but... You know, like Michael Jackson had Thriller, right? 1984, 14-minute video. Phallus in Wonderland, I don't know how long it is, what, 40, 45 minutes? Great story. You got a priest getting the cross shoved up his ass. People getting their fucking guts ripped out. Kids eating, smoking getting a crack pipe out of a box of cereal and getting all twacked out. It's, it's gore. So after the Morality Squad, we get the title track. And it's just an instrumental. And there's a part in there, something, if I can remember right. Hey, motherfucker! 
it, literally that's the only part I remember. This is the one song on the album. It's just a filler, uh, uh, and that's okay. The, they can have at least one song on this amazing album that's, I don't want to say a waste of time, but it is a filler. And I know I usually don't ever say that when it comes to an album that's in, that's in the top 50, but it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Now, for the purposes of this review, yeah, I guess I'm doing it as a CD, but I have both. I know, that's that... Uh, thing that's wrong in my head you know, Iron Maiden Killers, I have the CD and the cassette, they're just certain albums that are that special uh, but let's say I was listening to the cassette, right now I'd be flipping over side B Gilded Lily and it gets back into the story of America Must Be Destroyed uh, kind of a fast paced, it it's still got that nice crunch from ball sack, uh, and it starts out with odorous delivering perfectly. Well, I've been wearing a gilded lily, cunningly carved in a manner frilly. To my design it was created. No deviation was tolerated. My gilded lily, he think he funny. My gilded lily, he worth cash money. My gilded lily, he made me a smarty. I wore my lily to all the right party. All the right parties go, and uh, decent, solid song. I'm not saying it's a filler. Okay, America must be destroyed. That song, yes, that was a filler. This is not, but I have to get to the next song because I love this bad boy. One of their most underrated songs. Poor old Tom. Ah, this bad boy. Very slow. Uh, one of the slower gore songs. It, it's just intentionally intentionally slow, but the, it's so heavy. Dun, 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 and the main guitar riff. Uh, ball sack. Just fucking pounds you in the chest with this riff. He wakes on the outskirts of town. He sobs. His bowels release. His face is painted like a clown his face his face contorts in agony Poor Tom. and that even the chorus is slow you know just uh, just a couple power chords you know and I think it's like a half step thing that uh, Balzac does on the guitar it's just it's a nice change up um, from what we've got and on the record there's that word dynamic you second verse you wake and wait but you don't want to wait you drag yourself from sleep but look Tom is coming you kick him kick him in the teeth then we get to the third third verse the local Nazi bully boys must be rid of Tom so the death camp will be immaculate when they turn the ovens on they smash his face in the shit he rides in he rides in his death throes poor tom pa oh tom in typical odorous fashion you know he changes his voice to fit the mood of the song he's i i can't tell you how great this album still sounds uh, so heavy and as a band they just they're, they're tight ah I love this album I almost feel bad I really do that it's number two um, but after next week you'll understand why and I'll be able to explain it and then we get to actually my favorite song on the album of all the great songs on here, rock and roll never felt so good. And I think on purpose, it kind of has that 80s glam rock sound, and they do that on purpose. Oh, these lyrics. If, if you're easily offended, then this song is going to 
really piss you off. And I'm going to go through the lyrics here, so prepare yourself. I met her at a donkey show. She was minutes past 13. Sucking on a cherry yoo reading nugget magazine. Comb spattered tube top. Scrawny pre tits. That's when I saw she was a quadruple chick. And I said, baby, you're looking good. That's when I noticed her legs were wood. I grabbed a stump and I dragged her out the door. I need a hole. I don't need no hips. I laid a line of coke on her tits. That's when I ripped off her dirty shit-filled drawers. Dun, dun, dun. And I say, good. Should. Good. Yeah, and on that course... He does something on there. It's just a simple little thing. But he, like I said before about like the half step he does on the on the course of poor old Tom, he kind of does that here. Good. Sure. Good. I don't know. It just kind of adds a heaviness to it. But it still, it does. The, the song itself, it gives you that 80s feel. And that's okay. You know, I love the 80s. Okay, second verse. It wasn't nothing pretty, she took my gentle little germ. Her limbless body thrashed around, filled with infected sperm. I criss-crossed with my cable. I smashed her face through a door. They found her in a plastic bag down by highway. 64. And I said, baby, you're looking good. That's when I saw that her legs were wood. And all you people, you just can't understand. I need a hole, I don't need no hips. I need the taste of dick on my lips. I fucked her asshole with a piece of frozen shit. Yeah. How about that? (laughs) It's just... Yeah, I know a lot of people that don't have a sense of humor. Like, And I get it. Uh, It's not fun. It's not funny to make fun of people that are disabled. And I'm not. Okay, I'm just taking it for what the song is. And it's, that's what Odorous does, or did. Man, it's just hard for me. It's been, what, four years? No, well, it'll be four years in March. Uh, here in three months. I just can't believe he's gone. I miss him, alright? I miss my dad. Now the next song, Blimey, I'm skipping it too. It's decent, not a filler. But the reason I have to skip it is because of the next song, another staple, The Road Behind. And what's awesome, the video. By the way, I think Fowls in Wonderland, all of it's on YouTube. So you can watch it after you listen to this review. In the video, he's got a bandana on, Odorous does. You know, kind of copying Axl Rose a little bit. We get the acoustic guitar at the beginning. Well, and then the guitars kick in. And can I say it's the greatest ballad ever written? Of course I can't, because that's what it is. Gore sings a power ballad. And it's fucking awesome because it's funny. The music's great. Well, I'm traveling down the road and I'm carrying that heavy load. I'm in a Drug and do stupor, sleazy. I can't do the show. I'm hanging out backstage. I'm in a homicidal rage. Signed a million dollar contract. I puked on every page. And when the chorus comes in, Beefcake, yeah, that same Beefcake uh, that I said sounded great um, as a musician on this album, he nails it on the vocals too because he, he sings the. Uh, course on the road behind he sounds fucking good uh, <laughs> and of course Odor sings uh, slaughtered half the crew because they ate my deli tray oh baby said I'd do the show but I canceled anyway you are a roadkill baby till I scraped you in my arms just another waddle flapping on the old turkey farm so baby dun, dun, dun. and then of course we get the chorus and that's uh, beefcake and the wheels keep rolling. And another signpost gone. All along the road behind. It's a great song. Uh, and then in the second verse, uh, 
odorous things. I snuffed a million planets. But I still find time to cry because there's more to life than making other people die. <laughs> it's just, it's typical gore. Uh, you know, it kicks ass. It's got balls. It makes you laugh. It's just a fucking great time. And it ends with the last track, Pussy Planet. Uh, Beefcake, a.k.a. Blothar. Go ahead and call him that. Because that's who he is. Uh, and he sounds good on here, too. Uh, into the Valley we go to Bliss, the witch. He's sucking ultimate power. Life's suck zonk zone. Stands over you, squat launching you. Um, yeah. Quick little song that wraps up the album. And like I said, you guys... Obviously, it's a special album to be number two. And I'm telling you, I wanted to make it number one so bad. And it's just like by a hair that I picked the other album over it. But I'll link it to the Facebook page today. Check it out. Especially going into the weekend. And if you, because especially if you haven't heard this album. You need to. It will change your life. Alright. Take it easy. And if it's easy, take it twice. I'm out.